Hello everyone, in this video I will show how to create a model in ANSYS Maxwell for a magnetic gear. So for a magnet gear it will have three parts, one stationary part and two rotational parts. So here we can create a two, new 2D model and I will show how to draw the geometry for the inner rotor. So instead of putting numbers here, I will create several variables. First, inner radius Ri, I will assign the value to be 10 millimeters. And this value, I will put it as Ri1, the value will be 12 millimeter. And then use the subtract function, I will create the back iron of the rotor. I can change the name to iron and select the material to be lamination for example M19 I can also change the color then I will create the magnets so for the inner rotor there will be four poles for the magnets so each magnet here the span will be 90 degrees Again, instead of putting numbers for these curves, I will use variables. The angle here I will use ang1, I will define it as 90 degrees. The same thing for the other curve. I will define a new variable R01. Type is length, the value will be 14 millimeter. The same thing for the angle here. For straight lines, I use these predefined variables Ri1, Ro1, and for the last one, it's the same Ri1 and Ro1. Now we can unite them together to make a piece of magnet. Now I can change name as well, Mac, and the color. Since there will be four posts, I will duplicate it around the Z axis. And two of them will have different magnetizing direction. So I will assign this material first with the magnetizing direction in the radial outwards direction. So it's already defined here, uh, out. We can see the coordinate system should be cylindrical and the R component is one. And for this, it's the same process. The only difference is the magnetizing direction will be opposite. So it's N in. Let's see. The R component is minus 1 instead of 1 now. Okay, now we have successfully created the geometry for the inner rotor. We can group them together and change the group name to I inner rotor. We can also assign parameters to this rotor, for example, torque, inner torque, it should be around the axis of Z. Okay, so it's the uh, same thing to create the cage rotor, as shown here, and the outer rotor. After this, we will also need to assign bands, two bands here, because there will be two rotational parts. Be sure that the bands do not touch each other and also there will be a small air gap between the two bands. Then we can assign the motions for the two bands. For the inner rotor, there is no speed, speed is zero. For the cage rotor, it has a speed of 100 RPM also. The initial position is 14 degrees. The goal is to find the position where the 
cage order will reach its maximum torque. We can run the transient analysis to see the torque plots. This is a torque table of the cage order. We can see that um, at time step 11, the peak torque occurs. So, and the time step is 1 over 6,000 seconds with uh, 100 RPM, which means one time step the rotor will rotate 0.1 degrees. So, 11 time step, there will be 10 intervals, so the angle will be 1 degree. So, considering the initial position is 14 degrees plus 1 degree, so if the initial position is 15 degree, this cage rotor will reach its maximum torque position. Therefore, in next analysis, the initial position was changed to be 15 degrees. The same speed, 100 RPM, and also for the inner rotor, it's also rotating this time with a speed of 450 RPM. The number of the speed totally depends on the number of pole pair combinations of the inner rotor and the cage rotor. And we can again run the simulation this is the transient. We can see the torque now is a constant for both the inner rotor and the cage rotor. This is the torque of the inner rotor, and the average torque of the cage rotor is about 17 newton meters. We can also check or calculate the torque ripple. Besides, the mesh plus is available. The flux lines is also available for the three rotors and also the flux density plots. In many cases, engineers will not use these traditional uh, radially magnetized magnets. They will use a special magnet array called Hallback Ray. So here, in this example, I'll show how to simulate the Hallback Ray. So in this case, the outer magnets and the inner magnets, they are not segmented anymore. They are just two ring magnets. So they are ideally perfectly magnetized using the uh, sinusoidal Hallback distribution. So for example, for the outer rotor here, if we look at the property of the material, so the outer rotor, it should have seven pole pairs. Look at the magnetizing direction. For the R component, it is cosine seven times phi. And for the phi component, it's sine 7 times phi. 7 means the pole pair is 7. So using this expression, the flux of this magnet will concentrate on the left side instead of the right side. The same thing for this inner magnet. So the inner magnet should have two pole pairs, and the flux should concentrate on the right side. So here, the R component is minus cosine 2 phi. Phi component is sine 2 times phi. So 2 means it has two pole pairs. So, and also be noted there is a minus sign here because the flux will concentrate on the right side this time instead of the left side. So using these two Hallback array, the flux will concentrate more on these two air gaps. Therefore, the torque created will be much higher than the previous model. We can take a look at the torque plot of the inner and the cage rotor. So if we recall the previous model, the peak torque of the cage rotor was about 17 Nm. In this case, the peak torque is 100 Nm, which is significantly higher. We can also find the um, maximum torque position. Uh, first, we need to take a look at the time steps. So it, it is still 100 RPM for the cage rotor. The time step is 5 over 6,000, which means that for each time step, the rotor will rotate 0.5 degrees. So the maximum torque position is at 30th time step so there will be 29 intervals so 29 times 0.5 degrees which is 14.5 degrees 
So the cage rotor need to rotate 14.5 degrees to reach its, its peak torque position. Since this is a transient analysis, in most cases, engineers will need to find the uh, optimal design points to reach the um, optimization of the either the torque or the volume torque density or the mass torque density or the power density. So in this case, we will need to run some parametric sweep and optimization in static analysis. So we can copy this transient analysis, paste, and we can change the solution type to magnetic, static. Don't forget, we need to look at the peak torque position. And we already know that the cage rotor needs to rotate by 14 point five degrees to reach its maximum torque position so we can rotate it manually and then we can add solutions since we have already defined all these geometry variables which is shown here in the property window we can do the parametric study for example we can add any variables we have defined here for example inner radius we can change it. We can also another one, for example, AG1, which is the air gap length. We can change it from 0.2 millimeters to 0.5 millimeters with a step of 0.1. Now, two variables were selected, and totally 44 cases will be swept. As a summary, this video covers how to create a simple geometry of the magnet gear and also how to set the um, quick analysis for static and transient and um, in the future videos I will also cover the analysis for the loss calculation of magnet gears thanks for watching